I am a Mexican-American, Chicano, if you will, or uh, you know, U.S.-born, Hispanic. That's pretty much how I identify myself. My memories, of course, of, of my family growing up in Los Angeles. Actually, living away from it, I realize a couple things about how I grew up. Um, one of them, it, it's, it's incredibly segregated. I grew up in a neighborhood about age nine on, one block into what was called a red line. My parents bought a home from a real estate agent that was a Russian Jew, and he didn't really care whether we were Hispanic or not, or, or Mexican. We moved into the neighborhood, and my mom went to introduce herself to the neighbors. And I was with her, and she said, my name is Mrs. Velasco, and we're the new neighbors. And the first thing that came out of her mouth is, why are Mexicans so lazy? And so, in some respects, our family grew up very isolated in that neighborhood. I had my brothers and sisters. I, I grew up in a family of four, and no one would really talk to us. Even today, it sort of impacts you as you go through life, and I don't really talk to my neighbors much. You know, it's like one of these things that, it, my wife is much better at doing that now, and so I, I've kind of broken down those sort of old barriers that have existed you know, since the, the beginning. The thing growing up too, um, and my childhood memories as, as far as LA is concerned, is that I never feared anyone, I feared the, the police though, and that was how you grew up. I had been stopped, I don't know how many times, uh, as a teenager and a, as a young, you know, 20-something year old in LA. I was a college student in UCLA, but it just didn't fit some sort of profile. I had just had numerous bad experiences with, with police, and so whenever I would go out, it was like, if you see the police, you, you steer away from them. Um, I've been in many ne different neighborhoods, and in supposedly dangerous neighborhoods, never felt threatened as I do uh, from, from the police, and that still carries with me, even though I work for a big national lab, I have a you know, top secret clearance and everything else. Something to do with authority sometimes makes me uh, uh, pull back, you know, and, and I'm, a little, I'm a little tentative when it comes to, to dealing with uh, uh, authority figures like that. I'm a seismologist by training, and so I'm an earthquake seismologist. And growing up in LA, I never thought I'd end up studying earthquakes. I more feared earthquakes than anything. And how I got to studying that was really somewhat random. And what I mean by that is that when I went to UCLA, I was good at math and physics, and I liked the outdoors. So what did I put together? I put, oh, geophysics. I had no idea what it was. When I graduated, I had one professor really encourage me to go to graduate school, and I lucked out and, and uh, ended up going to UC Santa Cruz for my PhD. There was a capstone course in our, in our degree, and it was a geology field course, and um, quite frankly, it was the hardest course I've ever taken, and I worked the hardest I've ever worked for a class, and I had pretty poor study habits. But me and a colleague of mine, uh, another ge fellow geophysicist, we worked really hard. We worked together for a lot of the class, um, and we ended up getting the top scores. And so what I realized then is that, hey, if I work really hard, I can really do well. I was terrified about the whole graduate school process. Um, we had the first semester what we called the baby oral exam. So I went in terrified, thinking that number one, I wasn't really qualified to be there, and number two, that I was an affirmative action sort of token guy. But when I ended up taking that oral exam, I rated second out of a class of 20. And then I, I bared down. I said, well, you know, I don't like this place, but I'll work incredibly hard and get out in four years. I'll get my PhD in four years. In many respects, that's, that's really, um, you know, in honor of my parents and, and their families and their struggles all, all the way through, through life and my grandparents that migrated from Mexico. My grandparents didn't speak an ounce of English. And the whole point is to try to take advantage of opportunities. And if I didn't at least try, I mean, that it's really a disappointment for everyone. Mexican-American is how I identify myself, Latino. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that. And I think part of it has to do with my struggles when I went to Santa Cruz were not just professional. They were personal in many respects. And that's basically who self-identity. Who am I? Well. I'm just Aaron Velasco from LA, you know, and other people of you is, oh, well, you're Aaron Velasco, you're, you're a minority. And so I work very hard to be accepted in my, my field. In fact, I think I am. I think people view me as a, I mean, as a solid performer in the academic and in, 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 in science field.
I feel like I have succeeded in my field. I feel like I'm, I'm starting to win grants that are based on uh, science alone, and I'm starting to, to, to really be known in the field um, as, a, as a seismologist. But I am who I am, too, and so I embrace that now. I didn't embrace it when I was a graduate student. The types of stuff that I do today, I do research that's related to large earthquakes. And right now, I'm really excited about some results that I'm working on where I'm discovering that large earthquakes halfway across the world can trigger small earthquakes, like in the United States, for example. And that happens actually quite frequently. I teach, of course, and I also mentor students. Um, I have about four PhD students, and I have an undergrad that works for me. And then um, I do service stuff. I do service for the, for the campus, you know, I'm on a dean search committee and now I'm president of SACA. So, I mean, that's, that's a, lot of, a lot of different things. I view myself as a problem solver and that's, that's essentially what a scientist is.